We are in Brunswick, Maine. We're at Brunswick Landing, which is like the old Air Force Base here in Brunswick. Uh, and there's this beautiful grove of trees. I shot a photo of it last year. We'll put it on screen right now. Uh, we didn't shoot a vlog around it, but one of my favorite winter photos from last year, we're back to the same location. Gonna see if we can get something a little different. It is uh, absolutely dumping with snow, if you can see. Uh, I love snowy conditions. Of course, I love them so much that I can never find a composition. So we're gonna go try to find a good composition. And uh, yeah, why don't you guys follow along? This is always a fun thing for me. I don't know if it's fun for you guys, but coming back to old locations and like seeing like the other side of your photo, you know, like my photo from last year, which we put on screen is, is from down there. And it's one of those little pines, like right in the middle. There was a lot more snow. So a lot of this was a lot cleaner, um, but yeah, it's just cool to like see that other perspective, like see from, see what you were shooting from that perspective, you know what I'm saying? I probably made that way more confusing than it needed to be, but let's uh, let's see what we can go find over in here. This looks pretty cool. Uh, caution falling snow. For real out here though, like <laughs> every once in a while this like big ball of snow will fall right behind you and I'm just waiting for my camera to be set up on the tripod and I... <laughs> like that. That's unreal. <laughs> Before I pull my camera out, I'm gonna just pull out my trusty little iPhone here and uh, try to frame up a shot before I get the big camera out and it gets covered in snow. <laughs> um, yeah, just sort of helps me with my composition, makes me work a little bit more efficiently. And uh, yeah, this is, this is cool. Don't touch the trees, you will get covered in snow. <laughs> it's wet and heavy, so it's like, it's all just collected up top on this canopy and it's starting to warm up and the wind's starting to pick up a little bit, just a little bit, and uh, it's just <laughs> dropping left and right. Let's see how this goes. I framed up a shot with my phone and pulled my camera out, set up my tripod, and uh, we'll shoot away. Yeah, real, real quick, like, cause where my camera's gonna get ruined out here. When you're shooting in conditions like this, you wanna be careful about not sort of disturbing the snow in your photo. So walk, what I've done is like, we came in, I went that way, and then I zigged back this way, and then I zigged back the other way, and I sort of like worked my way into where I thought the photo was, you know, sort of like, I mean, Paul might be able to get some B-roll of the tracks here, but just like try to be cautious about where you step and where you where your photo might be. Just think about that ahead of time. Sort of like you can always move forwards, but you can't move back again. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yep. I'm tempted to like put it near a tree, but I don't think that's gonna help. I know it helps with the, the falling snow, but not with the branches. All right, real quick, like snap, snap, snap. Oh, wrong lens. No, oh, changing the lens. So we're out here in the snow. I have a Canon 5D4. Uh, it's weather sealed, thank God, with uh, 16 to 35, which is also weather sealed, thank God. <laughs> and then uh, I'm at 24 mil. I'm shooting this like little grove. There's like a couple just like little pines right here. And then this, this horizontal 
sort of strip of other smaller pines that are a little bit bigger. And then all of these tall straight pines covered in snow. Pretty gorgeous photo. It's kind of hard to shoot. It's hard to capture snow like this. It's hard to find a good composition because everything just looks beautiful. You think everything is a photo, but like finding good balance and, and textures and lines and all those things, all the, the rules of composition still apply even when the snow is falling this hard. This sucks, I did not bring a towel. Um, all right, so real quick, I am at 24 mil, I'm at 13th, 1 13th of a second, F11, ISO 100, uh, 24 mil. I'm almost focused to infinity, but not really. Uh, I'm not super close to my foreground subject, so I don't need to really worry about focus stacking. It's all, it's all pretty sharp at F11, or acceptably sharp, I should say. Um, and yeah, other than that, I'm in a four by four by three ratio. I'll probably go to a four by five ratio or crop in, uh, in Lightroom when I get there, but yeah, it's pretty much it. No filters, no polarizer, just, uh, just the photo. Let's put a two second timer on like a big boy. And then we will shoot these photos. I'm still getting a little highlight clipping from the sky above. Uh, so I am going to um, go to F13 and 1 20th of a second. I was wrong earlier. Still some, ooh. Still a little bit of clipping in the highlights up there. But my histogram's not reading any clipped whites. I'll be able to bring those back in post. And even if they are clipped a little bit, it's, it's such a minuscule amount, it's really not gonna matter. Uh, so I'm working with a few different shutter speeds just to see if I can get some of the snow falling, you know, some of the action of the snow falling. Those. <laughs> My God. Just got dude. blasted. Blasted with snow. <laughs> oh. oh, rookie mistake. Oh, come rookie on. Mistake. What would Gary say? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Gary Pearl, I'm sorry, buddy. Close the bag. Always. Always close the bag. Gary Pearl, if you see this, let's go shoot. I've changed my composition slightly. I've raised my tripod up just a little bit and I lifted my center column. I know all you picky landscape photographers out there are gonna say, no, don't do that. But all I'm gonna do is put my 10 second timer on. Boom. And then I'm just gonna wait and it's not gonna move or shake at all because it's calm out here. So you can use your center column. Don't let people fool you. That being said, I am about to order a tripod that doesn't have a center column. <laughs> but yeah, I, back to this photo, the composition uh, I think is a little bit better. It gives it a little more depth uh, being a little bit higher off the ground. All right, guys, we're back in the studio. I'm gonna take you through my editing process like I promised you. Uh, just go through my basic Lightroom editing. I'll do a little bit in Photoshop. We'll recap a little bit. I'll show you a little before and afters of uh, this photo that I took today, and we'll go from there. So let's dive right in. We're gonna start in Lightroom in our basic panel. We're gonna start with uh, profiles. I like Adobe Landscape, a lot of people don't really like it because it can be a little oversaturated, but you can totally change that later. I like that it gives you, it sort of 
uh, pushes my highlights down and my shadows up to give me a little more flatter profile to start with. But I'm even gonna do that myself. I'm gonna flatten this thing right out, bring my highlights down, my shadows up somewhere, somewhere in there. I'm gonna bring my exposure up a little bit. I'm looking at my histogram and it's looking a little low there. So we're gonna just brighten this image up. Especially because it's a winter photo, I wanna keep this thing sort of high key a little bit, you know, keep it a little bit brighter. I generally don't mess with this contrast slider much. I don't really like how uh, it produces contrast. I like to sort of create it myself through the whites, blacks, uh, clarity, dehaze, tone curve, and then again in Photoshop. Uh, for me, generally, contrast is king. It, uh, uh, it really makes your photo photos pop, gives them sort of a three-dimensional look, even though we're working in, in two dimensions. Uh, but let's get back into the basic panel here. Uh, I'm gonna bring my whites back up. Even though I crushed my highlight, my brought my highlights back, brought my shadows up, I'm gonna bring my whites up and my blacks down. The highlights and the shadows really just gives you more detail and then the whites and the blacks sort of bring the contrast back into that. So that's looking pretty good. I do like to uh, periodically check my before and after sort of just like give me a reference point. A raw photo is by no means what the eye is seeing. This is just allowing me to capture every little piece of detail uh, and as much dynamic range as possible. Um, but that is looking pretty good right there. <clears throat> I think uh, a lot of times people overlook the little details, like the little adjustments to your blacks and your whites and all your sliders, uh, the, the minor adjustments to your tone curve. Pay attention to that stuff. It really matters. It tends to add up. So we're going to move down to our tone curve. We're going to create a little bit of an S curve here. I generally work with somewhere between two and three points. I generally don't use more than that. I might use more with uh, wedding photography, but with landscape photography, that's pretty much all I'm doing. Just I'm just adding a little bit of contrast because if I if I start crushing this too much, that's that's looking a little little over edited, if you will. I like to keep things uh, pretty subtle these days. So that's looking pretty good in my tone curve. Um, I like to work in the linear curve here. Um, and uh, some people like to work in the region tone curve. Both are useful. Sometimes I use both, um, sometimes not, but this is looking pretty good for now. So we'll close that up. <clears throat> now we're down to the HSL sliders. Uh, this is where we deal with uh, the hue, saturation, and luminance of all of our color uh, values here. So something I do very often is select this little point right here, adjust hue by dragging the photo. And this just allows you to select the point, uh, like select your color, and then you can just drag it up or down. It's going to be really subtle in this photo because there's not a lot of color, but you can sort of see those greens change as I move up and down uh, with this point. And you see how it's selecting the yellows and the greens because that's because that's because there's that both those colors exist where I am selecting. So we, I like to make those greens pop a little bit more. Yellow is not my favorite color, so I tend to, uh, I tend to slide that towards the green a little bit, and then I'm gonna desaturate those yellows just a bit. This is looking pretty good so far. Uh, I'm going to come back up here to my white balance. Uh, I generally don't mess with my white balance until I'm starting to look at colors. Um, and then I sort of correct, come back to it and make it correct. But yeah, I'm just going to cool it down a little bit, work with my tint a little bit. I try not to push the tint too far one way or another. Um, but when I'm looking for... Like in a winter scene, I generally it, it's cold outside, and I want to uh, <clears throat> I want the viewer to notice that, and so dragging that temperature slider down a little bit into the forty. Uh, we're we're probably going to be more around five thousand fifty two hundred somewhere in there. It looks pretty good. I like to keep it nice and cool. 
Perfect. That looks great. Uh, come back down here to saturation. We're going to up those greens a little bit. And let's see what this blue looks like. That looks pretty good in there. Bring that luminance up of everything just to really make this thing really pop off the page. Uh, we're going to we're going to skip split toning for now. I don't think I we're, we're going to come back to this. Let's start with sharpening. So uh, Lightroom automatically sharpens your photos. Uh, um, I've noticed that with uh, particular camera profiles, it does automatic sharpening. Um, I don't think it does it when we shoot Fuji, but when we shoot Canon, it definitely does. Uh, and this uh, is sort of a lot of sharpening. I don't really like the way uh, Lightroom sharpens as much as Photoshop. I prefer it a lot more, but I'm, I generally don't touch these sliders, but I do touch the masking. And the ma all the masking does is uh, you can hold Option and then see uh, where the white is, where the white parts are selected. That is the, the places where the sharpening is going to be applied. So as I bring this down, it's all white. And that's going to apply sharpening to the entire image. And as I drag it up, it's only going to apply sharpening to the places that have sort of hard, hard contrast. And that's how uh, sort of the sharpening is applied. Noise reduction is fine because my ISO was 100. There's a lot of detail in this photo. So I'm not, I don't really want to smooth it out with the noise reduction. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration and enable my profile corrections. And then we're not going to transform anything. Uh, I'm going to add a, just a very, very small, subtle vignette to this. And then camera calibration. I, uh, I do mess with this occasionally, only if I'm going for a particular look and I generally bring my blue primary down, switch my, change my hue a little bit. That saturation is going to come down just a little bit. And then we're going to play with the red primary, but I don't think. I think we're just going to switch it this way a little bit. And that looks pretty good to me. We're still looking a little dark to my edit before. So I'm going to up this, and we're looking a little pink. So. And guys, I really recommend just playing with these sliders, seeing what they do, seeing how they affect the image. Crank it all the way up and crank it all the way down and, and, and see how it affects the image. That's the only way you're going to really learn how these all this, uh, this work in, in Photoshop. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> That's how you're really going to figure out how these sliders work in Lightroom. That looks pretty good. Texture clarity and dehaze. I uh, generally bring up just a little bit in my photos lately, especially with these really detailed photos. Let's go in here. We're, this is four to one here. So this is uh, yeah, a lot of de good detail in here. Let's go back to two to one here. Yeah, this looks, this looks great. Uh, I am going to mess with my crop a little bit. I don't really like all the white space in the foreground. I really want to just fill my frame. So I'm going to go with a 16 by 9. I'm going to bring it up. And that's just going to sort of let these trees at the bottom of the uh, of the frame fill it up a little bit more. It seemed there's a little too much empty space at the bottom. And that's looking pretty good. I like that. <clears throat> So I do love this photo. I love all the tall uniform trees. I love the, the mini pines in the middle ground and then these couple of pines, smaller pines in the foreground. Uh, I do wish that these were a little more uniform in terms of my composition. But other than that, I'm, I'm really happy with this photo. This looks great. The snow on the trees was just fantastic and uh, really excited to capture a scene like this. So. We're looking pretty good in Lightroom at this point. I think I'm going to hop on into Photoshop 
and we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to add a little more contrast. We're going to add a little bit of a sh of sharpening. Um, and uh, we're also going to add a little Orton effect. So first thing I do in Photoshop right away is create another layer. Always want to do that. It's just sort of like Photoshop 101. Uh, from here, I create two curve adjustment layers. The first one, I'm going to label shadows. And the second one, I'm going to label highlights. I'm going to select this, the shadows. <clears throat> Make sure there's a mask on it. And we're going to go uh, select color range. And then up here and select, we're going to select just the shadows. And again, remember when we were uh, masking sharpness in Lightroom earlier? Well, here it's uh, uh, Photoshop is masking or is selecting just the dark parts of the image. And I can adjust that here in the range. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to select. And this is the fuzziness. This is sort of like the, the fall off, uh, um, if you will, of, of the shadows. And that's looking pretty good right there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the highlights. We're going to go back into color range. We're going to select highlights this time. And we're going to go somewhere around there. A lot of whites in this image, which is good. And then just sort of play with that fuzziness, see how much, see how it affects the, the image. And then we're going to click OK. We're going to go back into our shadows and we're going <clears> to, <throat> now we're in the, the uh, tone curve here. See how the values in in the histogram here are just on in the blacks. There's nothing in the white value. That's, uh, that's because we just selected all the dark parts of the image. And what we're going to do we're going to create a little micro contrast within just that shadow range. So bring that those the really dark values we're going to bring down even more and then these mid mid or uh, you know sort of higher values uh almost mid tones we're going to bring back up so it brings a little more detail back into the photo. Then we're going to jump into the highlights and we're going to sort of do the same thing, except I try not to create as much contrast, especially in this photo. I really want those whites to pop. So I might just create one, one point and that's going to just add a little more, maybe bring those midtones back down a little bit. That looks good. And again, guys, just, just play with this stuff. Just experiment and have fun with it. Uh, I try not to think of it as a, uh, a, a super daunting task to edit because if that's the case, then you're not going to want to edit your photos. Um, but I love this. I love changing that the, the little bits and pieces here and there, and then you finish your image and it all adds up into something beautiful and, and really fantastic. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, if this, you know, you can really take this uh, further if you want, and then come back to your opacity and just slide that over and 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 see how much you want to use of that particular layer that I do that a lot that's a really helpful tool in uh, in Photoshop all right that looks great we've added a little more contrast I'm gonna add a hue saturation um, layer here and then we are gonna select our reds because there's a little bit of red in these tree trunks here and I'm just gonna just gonna mess with that a little bit I kind of want that red that deep dark earthy brown color to to show through so I'm gonna I'm gonna up that saturation a little bit <clears throat> that looks really good uh, I'm gonna go into blues and I'm gonna slide those around a little bit until I like them um, Maybe a little more towards the green, just ever so slightly. Again, those subtle movements can really uh, make or break your photo. Up that saturation a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Let's go into greens and we'll mess with this a little bit. 
I like the hue values in Photoshop. I, it seems like they have uh, a little more of a color space than Lightroom does. Sometimes I feel a little limited with the colors I want to produce in Photoshop, but or in uh, sorry, pardon me, in Lightroom. But in Photoshop, they uh, they really tend to pop. So this is, this looks great. Awesome. So that hue saturation is looking pretty good at this point. I might come back to it later, but I like the way that looks. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp all of my visible layers into one. So I'm gonna go Shift Command Option E. That's a great little shortcut that I use all the time. Um, and that's gonna create a new later layer with all of my layers basically into one. Uh, so there's a few things that bother me in this photo. A couple of these brushies down here on the left uh, side of the image that you see, a couple more br uh, little twigs on the right side, bottom right of the frame. Uh, and I'm gonna just take my healing brush tool, I'm gonna zoom in, take my trusty Wacom here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get rid of a few of these. Won't make you guys sit through this whole thing. I'll fast forward through some of this. Much better, much better. So that looks really good. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to filter and sharpen. We're gonna go to smart sharpen. I like the way that Photoshop uh, <clears throat> sharpens more than uh, Lightroom. It's just sort of a cleaner look. And same thing, I'm at, they have the amount of sharpening, the radius, and uh, the noise reduction here in Lightroom. So you, again, you can just sort of play with these sliders. Perfect, that looks good. And if I was smart enough, I would have done this on a separate layer so I could adjust the opacity of the sharpening. That, uh, that can be helpful sometimes as well. If you don't wanna get it, spend the time getting it just right, you can adjust that later on. Uh, and then I'm gonna stamp that again with the shift option command E. And then, uh, so I've downloaded Easy Panel 2.0. Um, I'll set up a link in the description. This is just a free panel uh, that I downloaded online. And uh, this just comes with a bunch of little Photoshop preset things, uh, detail enhance, sharpen full size, sharpen for web. Uh, and, but what I use mostly out of here is the Orton effect. Uh, if you guys don't know what the Orton effect is, check that out on uh, YouTube. If you wanna see us creating the Orton effect, uh, leave a comment below and maybe we'll make that video in the future. But for now, I just like to click on that Orton effect. I'm gonna uh, ask me to select the amount of Gaussian blur that I'm using. And I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna adjust the opacity until I am happy with how that's looking. I like how the Orton effect, it doesn't sort of gives this like softer look to your photos, but it's not an out of focus photo or it's not a soft lens. You know, this photo is still super sharp and has a lot of detail, but it just sort of creates this sort of glow of, um, of a photo. There we go. I'll show you a little before and after of the Orton effect. You can see here, just like creates this like glow around the trees that looks really cool. Um, and that's generally the last thing I do. I'm gonna hit Command S and bring this back into Lightroom. That's saving, back into Lightroom. And boom. There it is. There's what we did in Photoshop. There's the before and there's the after. Awesome. Well, if you guys like this video, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see more videos, hit that like button. Uh, make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, if you like what you saw uh, and you learned a lot from this video, um, leave a comment. Let me know what you learned. Uh, if uh, there's something I miss that you do in your in your uh, editing process, let me know. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.